Zimbabwe in Nagpur. There it is. Slap bang in the middle uh, of India. This game could have a significant effect on the makeup of the quarter finalists in Group A. Have the two captains out in the middle. Up goes the coin. It is real bad. So, Andy, you won the toss, and what have you decided to do? Are we going to bet? Any particular reason for that? Well, it looks like a pretty good wicket, and hopefully we can get a good score on the board. Well, yesterday's result throws the group wild open. It certainly does, and uh, I mean, even if uh, people don't win games from here, and not even run rates will come into it. Well, you played three games so far. Any particular areas where you think you can improve on? I think generally our batting, I think we've got to... Confirm the two teams for today's game. Australia unchanged from that side that had that very, very good win against India the other day. No place for Michael Slater as yet, and Paul Rifle is still nursing his uh, leg strain. Zimbabwe, well, their bowling has been really reliant on Paul Strang, the, the leg break bowler. But as Andy Flower said, it's the batting that causes them uh, a lot of worries. Well, that swung a bit and well played. Beautifully driven through the offside field. Four all the way. That is a half volley. Always oh, played that one through the offside. Take that. Magnificently driven. So Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe trying to lift the rate a bit. 15 without loss. gone fine and a desperate lunge down there and it's gone for four so Damien Fleming has uh, done a fine leg that went very fine and very quickly as well oh he's bowled him neck and crop that's a little beauty it came back from outside off stump hit the inside edge of the bat and back went middle stump Well, this really is a beautiful delivery from Glenn McGrath. We've seen him getting the odd ball to nip back, and there again, getting it to come back a long way, getting the inner edge of Grand Flower, and knocking back the middle stump. 21 for one Zimbabwe. Fleming continues, and so does Andrew Waller. That is a magnificent strike. He hit two off the front foot through extra cover in the fourth over of the day. And now he's on the back foot. It's unlike Fleming, he normally doesn't give the batsman very much width, but he has done on uh, at least four occasions this morning. One produced a great save that would have also gone for four. And that's a fine shot. The mark of a good batsman to be able to play off the back foot on a pitch that uh, just lacks a little bit of uh, pace and bounce. And that's beautifully timed. Just a little punch at it, and that's every bit as good as the one just previously. It's actually bowling to Guy Whittle, who's punched him down the ground. Whittle's strongest stroke is the straight drive, and they're his first runs. Well, Shane Lear remember his first ball in Nagpur. He lost his run on the way in, stuttered, and then dropped a chance. got that away and it'll be four. Shane Lee firing it into the pads of Guy Whittle and he was very quick on that, always looking to attack this fellow. And a brilliant effort, absolutely brilliant. Stephen Waugh, you just can't keep this fellow out of the game. And Guy Whittle goes, caught and bowled, off a sharp return chance. Just like um, shelling peas. Picking an orange from Nagpur. It's 41 for two. That's it. No, that's four more. That's the slower ball from Stephen Waugh, and this time Andrew Waller picked it, got it rather higher than Guy Whittle managed to do, and nothing that Damien Fleming at mid-off could do about it. Chance and gone. Steve Waugh to Mark Waugh, and that's how Alastair Campbell goes. Well, funny game this. Campbell square cutting the previous ball for four, and this one pitched up by Steve Waugh, managing 
Campbell here driving on the up, getting an outside edge and straight into the hands of Mark Waugh at backward point. So Zimbabwe lose their third wicket, 55 runs on the board. That's a good shot. Not only got it past the infield, but he kept it away from Ricky Ponting on the boundary. 64 for three. Wrongen and beaten. Well bowled. Umpire Shepherd uh, has given Andy Flower out, and that's beautifully bowled. Shane Warne deceiving him with the wrong one. Well, we haven't seen too many wrong ones from Shane Warne, but have a look at this. Andy Flower in all sorts of trouble. Deceived here in the flight, ball leaving the bat, and Ian Healy making no mistake. Fourth Zimbabwe wicket gone, 68 runs on the board. In the air and into the gap. Well, that's gone flying away for four. Could so easy have gone to mid on. There's also a mid wicket hovering, but uh, as it turned out, he picked the gap. Oh, lovely. Beautiful placement, no doubt about that one. He had his eye on that spot because uh, the man at mid on had been moved wide. And uh, it's a half century for Waller, and he's done very well. Oh, he's hit that one, and that's gone miles. Way over the top. Fleming was hovering it down at the bottom, didn't know where it had gone. They may not get that one back. That is a huge hit. Well, that's got to be out. Yes, he's got him. That's well done. Healy going away there, and I tell you, it just seemed to me that the fieldsman at point may have created a bit of a problem for him. Looked for a second as if there was going to be a, a bit of a collision. As it turned out, there wasn't. Mark Waugh was in that position and nicely taken by Healy. He really is good at getting out of the traps and following these. Now there's uh, something for the sweepers of the world to think about. Oh. Come on! Oh, they've got to hurry here. Must be real problems there. Must be big problems for Andrew Waller. He was always up against it, one felt. And this would be a desperate disappointment. He's been the adhesive part of this Zimbabwe batting order. Let's have a look at it. I think he's gone. I don't know why he hung around at the non-striker's end for so long. He was there for an age before he decided to go for the second one. On to the slower ball. Now Fleming bowls that very well. Stephen Moore is the man there, placed specifically for that uh, lofted drive by Mark Taylor. And Fleming has held it back beautifully. It was a lovely piece of bowling. Seventh wicket gone, 140 on the board. see no better Yorker than that from a uh, medium fast bowler. Some of the really quick ones will get it in like uh, Waka Yunus before the batsman has time to get his bat down. That one was beautifully bowled. Three different changes of pace in three deliveries from Damien Fleming. Inside edge. Well, it's an absolute clinker. Not quite the uh, Mike Gadding ball, but it was good enough for uh, number 11 in Zimbabwe. It was a beauty. Uh, too good for number 11. Very little he could do about it, but to just watch the ball hit his off stump. So the Zimbabwe all out, and this last wicket to a great delivery from Shane Warne. Beautiful. Not a good ball, not one uh, Charlie Loft will revere as the match goes on, but um, it still had to be dealt with. And he's off for Mark as well. We've done in the grand fashion also. It's a very good shot, even though the field got a hand on it, it'll still go to the boundary and go there with great pace as well.
Made a nice, solid thunk of the ball when it hit the bat, meaning that it's hit uh, very, very close to the middle, if not spot on the middle. Also sounded like there's plenty of wood in that bat. Ball really raced away, even though the fields have got a hand on it. Nice stroke from Taylor. Beautifully placed and good timing. And uh, it's 31 for not. the little charge and uh, we can say that Mark Law is feeling quite comfortable. Yes, he's in very good form, Mark War. Taking advantage of the uh, field restrictions in the first 15 overs. Yes, I think you've got to look upon the, uh, the academy as a finishing school. Most of the young cricketers who are going there are very talented and probably going to make at least first class uh, standard on their own they perhaps just get there a bit quicker and a bit better prepared well, i'd suggest that that's not a good place to bowl to mark war well that's a good shot he smashed that away square you just can't bowl short to taylor in this frame of mind well i think he's playing very very well indeed he's uh, attitude at the moment at number one in this Australian batting lineup is to attack and it seems to me that he's taking the lead well Brian Strang just does not have the pace to trouble uh, Mark Taylor with a short delivery and promptly put away over mid wicket that's well played too and that'll be four forced away off the back foot through extra cover and that brings up the 50 nine runs off that over it's 51 without loss Oh, well played, beautifully driven, bisecting the fieldsman at mid-off an extra cover. A six boundary all the way along the ground. But no real effort in that shot from Mark War. It's all timing. And he makes it look so easy. Foot to the pitch of the ball, lovely follow through. Four runs, moment it left the bat. He really is a class act, is Mark War. It's nicely played. That'll go for four. Yes, it will. And that's his fourth boundary, and that was beautifully played, really. Again, waiting for the ball and not trying to hit it too hard, just uh, placing it very well. And that's, uh, I think, favourite at the moment. Well, that's nicely played again. Beautifully struck. Don't run for that. And he's not. Caressed through the offside field for four again. This has been the feature of Mark Ward's batting. Look how he waits on this ball. Doesn't try and hit it too hard. Just gets that placement right. There is a wide gap there between cover and point. And uh, he bisected that beautifully. Mark War has made two hundreds. Sheffield Shield competition against Shane Warne, so he's no mug against Rispin. So 50 to Mark War and another very good one too. 68 balls for it and full of the array of strokes that we've already seen in this World Cup. He's got back-to-back -back hundreds against Kenya and India and now a 50 against Zimbabwe to follow it up. Lovely timing and great grace. Well, he's pretty lucky to get away with that. It's uh, a wild bit of cricket, a high full toss and Mark Taylor with uh, a sort of slash through the covers and an inside edge. Keeper didn't have a chance, and it's four runs. And I spoke too soon. There we go. Mark Taylor for the second time in consecutive matches. Pulling the ball away on the leg side. A little bit of extra bounce and maybe some skid off the surface from Paul Strang. But Tony Gregg had been saying just 15 minutes ago how he was the most likely wicket taker. And why hadn't he been bought in earlier? There's all sorts of ways to get a wicket, and this is one of them. Basically, Judge Catch, and uh, it's a family affair out there with Brian Strang taking the catch. And Mark Taylor out for 34 from uh, 50 balls faced. It's 92 for one, and drinks. Oh, you... There's plenty of turn there. There's no leg slip in for it, and it runs away for four. 
full toss, and it's well timed by Ricky Ponting. Thumped away down the ground without any bother at all. That's a beautiful stroke. Splitting the two men out at long on and long off. This is a very quick outfield. And four more. Before runs, he picked the gap quite perfectly. That was the wrong one. Paul's trying, but punting very quick to rock back and picking the gap between extra cover and mid-off. Cruising to victory and Ponting taking that opportunity. This will doing the world of good. They're batting against a few spinners on the subcontinent. Catch, catch, Got him. Yes, caught and bowl. That's beautifully done. That's a magnificent catch, actually. He tried to hit it down the ground, closed the face just a little bit on it. And it was caught on the second attempt. That's well done. That's a beautiful piece of bowling by Paul Strang. That's the line he should be bowling. Middle and leg, making the batsman drive on the onside. This is exactly what Ricky Ponting has done. Not quite to the pitch of the ball. And a very good catch on the second attempt by Strang. Australia lose the second wicket. 150 runs on the board. And uh, that one's played away on the offside. And it'll go to the fence for four. And that is the end of the match. So the Australians winning comprehensively in this World's World Cup match against Zimbabwe. They bowled well, restricted the Zimbabweans to 154. Ponting right at the end out, caught and bowled, trying to finish it off for 33. At least he got a bit of a bat. And Steve Waugh, well, he was just out there.